Rambam, Mishneh Torah, Nizirut, Chapter 5, One Chapter a Day. Halacha 1. There are three matters that are forbidden to a Nazarite. A. Ritual impurity, resulting from contact with a human corpse. B. Shaving his hair. And C. Partaking of products of the vine. This applies both to the fruit or the waste products of the fruit. Alcoholic beverages made from dates, figs or the like are permitted to a Nazarite. The shaykh are forbidden to a Nazarite by the Torah is an alcoholic beverage made from a mixture of wine. Halakha what is meant by products of the grapevine? When a Nazarite eats an olive-sized portion of the fruit of the vine, which would be fresh grapes, raisins, or unripened grapes, or he eats an olive-sized portion of the waste products of the fruit, which are the peels, sorry, the peels or the seeds, he is liable for lashes. Similarly, if he drank a revi'it of wine or ate an olive-sized portion of coagulated wine, this is considered as fruit. Or drank a revi'it of vinegar, which is the waste product of the fruit, he is liable for lashes. Grape leaves, the tender shoots of the branches of the vine, grape sap and grape buds are permitted to a Nazarite. For they are neither fruit nor the waste products of fruit, but rather are considered as parts of the tree. Halakha 3. All forbidden grape products can be combined together to produce the minimum measure for which one is liable for lashes. What is implied? One who mixed together fresh grapes with raisins or with unripened grapes, pits and peels and ate an olive-sized portion of the mixture is liable for lashes. Similarly, if he ate them one after the other until he ate an olive-sized portion of the entire group, he is liable for lashes. Similarly, he is liable for lashes if he drank a revi'it of a mixture of wine and vinegar. Halakha 4. A permitted substance is not included together with a forbidden substance to produce the minimum, me, minimum measure for which a Nazarite is liable for lashes. What is implied? Wine was mixed together with honey, producing a mixture in which the flavour of wine could be tasted in it in its entirety, and a Nazarite drank the mixture. Raisins were pressed together with dried figs, producing a mixture in which the flavour of raisins could be tasted in its entirety, and a Nazarite ate the mixture. He is not liable for lashes unless there will be an olive-sized portion of grape products in a, in a portion of the mixture, the size of three eggs, as is the law with regard to other prohibitions that are forbidden universally, as we explained in Hilchot Machalot Asurot. Halacha 5. Similarly, if a person soaked his bread in wine and there was a revit of wine with Kedei Achilat Prat of the bread and he ate a Prat of the bread, he will have consumed a revit of wine. Hence, he is worthy of lashes. Concerning this and similar situations, the Torah Numbers 6.3 states, Anything that has been steeped in grape wine you shall not partake. 
This forbids an entity in which wine has been mixed and its flavour is the flavour of wine. This applies provided it has both the flavour and substance of the wine, as is the case with regard to other prohibited foods. Halakha 6. If wine or the like were mixed together with honey and the flavour of wine cannot be detected, it is permitted for a Nazarite to partake of the mixture. The Nazarite prohibitions should not be considered more severe than those against fat and blood. Halakha 7. If the mixture had the flavour of wine, but there is not a reviet of wine within Kede Achilat Prat, the mixture is prohibited according to Rabbinic Decree. As we explained in Hilchot Machalot Asurot, if the Nazarite partakes of it, he is given stripes for rebellious conduct. Halacha 8. When a Nazarite eats an olive sized portion of grapes, and an, an olive-sized portion of grape seeds, an olive-sized portion of grape peels, and an olive-sized portion of raisins, and drinks an olive-sized portion of wine, even if he squeezed a cluster of grapes and drank their juice, he receives five sets of lashes. For each of the substances is forbidden by a different prohibition. Sorry. Sorry about this, folks. For each of the substances is forbidden by a different prohibition. And he receives a sixth set of lashes for the violation of the prohibition. He shall not desecrate his word. That applies to all vows. Similarly, if he ate an olive-sized portion of peels or an olive-sized portion of grapes, he receives two sets of lashes, one for the peels or one for the grapes, and he is given an additional set of lashes because of the prohibition, he shall not desecrate his word. This law also applies to a Nazarite who shaves his hair or becomes impure. He receives two sets of lashes, one because of the violation of the particular prohibition and one because of the prohibition that applies to all vows, he shall not desecrate his word. Halakha 9. When a Nazarite drank a reviet of wine and a reviet of vinegar, he receives only one set of lashes. He is not liable for the wine and for the vinegar independently. The rationale is that the Torah does not say do not drink wine and do not drink vinegar. Instead, it states in number 6.3, he shall abstain from wine or alcoholic beverages. He shall not drink vinegar of wine or vinegar of alcoholic beverages, i.e. he should not drink wine or a beverage into which wine was mixed. That is the meaning of the term alcoholic beverages in the verse, even if they have become vinegar. Since the the Torah repeated only the term vinegar, which is one term, he does not receive lashes for them both independently. Halakha 10. When a Nazarite is drinking wine for the entire day, even though he is liable in God's eyes for every revi it, he receives only two sets of lashes, one for drinking wine and one for desecrating his word. As we explained, if he was given a warning for every reviet, he was told, do not drink, do not drink, and he nevertheless did drink, 
he is liable for a triviate. According to Rabbinic Decree, it is forbidden for a Nazarite to abide amidst a gathering of people drinking wine. Instead, he should separate himself far from them because they present a hurdle for him. Our sages said, do not come close even to the area around the vineyard. Halakha 11. When a Nazarite cuts off one hair, whether using a razor or a scissor, he is liable for lashes, provided he cuts it from its roots as a razor would. Similarly, if he pulls out a hair by hand, he is liable for lashes. Both the Nazarite whose hair is cut and the person who cuts his hair are liable. As indicated by number 65, a razor will not pass over his head. If he left enough of the hair so that it could be bent over for its tip to touch its root, he does not receive lashes, because cutting in this manner is not equivalent to shaving it with a razor. Halakha 12. If a person applied a potion that removed hair to his head, and in this way removed his hair, he is not liable for lashes. He is, however, nullifying the observance of a positive commandment. As number 65 states, he shall let the mane of the hair of his head grow. Halakha 13. When an Azurite shaves his entire head, he is liable for only one set of lashes for the shaving. If he was given a warning concerning each hair, i.e. he was told, do not shave, do not shave, and he shaved, he is liable for lashes for every hair. Halakha 14. When a Nazarite is scrubbing his hair with his hands and scraping his scalp with his nails, he need not worry about removing hairs accidentally because his intent is not to remove hair and it is possible that he will not remove any. He should not, however, comb his hair with a comb or scrape his head with earth for these activities will certainly remove hair. If he does so, he is not liable for lashes. Halakha 15. When a Nazarite becomes impure through contact with a human corpse in a manner that would require him to remain impure for seven days, he is liable for lashes. This applies with regard to, for, to ritual impurity for which he is required to shave, as will be explained, and for ritual impurity for which he is not required to shave. Halakha 16. When a Nazarite becomes impure through contact with a human corpse many times, even though in God's eyes he is liable for lashes for each time, the court holds him liable for only one set of lashes. If he was giving, given a warning concerning each time and he nevertheless became impure, he is liable for lashes for every time he became impure. Halakha 17. When does the above apply? When he became impure and then returned and touched, carried or stood over the corpse. If, however, he was touching a corpse and while the corpse was still in his hand, he touched another corpse, he is liable only once, even though he was warned for each time he touched it for his state of purity has already been desecrated. Halakha 18 When a Nazarite enters a home and remains there until a person dies, or he enters a shelter in which a corpse is located while he is in a closed container, chest, 
or closet. And a colleague came and opened the top of the chest with his consent, he is liable for two sets of lashes. One, due to the violation of the prohibition number 66, he shall not approach a human corpse, and one due to the violation of the prohibition from Pasuk 7, he shall not become impure. For his impurity and his entry come about at the same time. If, however, he enters such a shelter in an ordinary manner, his becoming ritually impure precedes his entry. For from the time that his nose or his toes enter, he becomes ritually impure, and he does not become liable for entering the shelter until his entire body enters. Halakha 19. When a Nazarite enters a shelter where a corpse is located, or a cemetery unintentionally, and after he discovers this fact, he received a warning, but did not jump up and leave, but instead remain there, he is liable for lashes. This applies, provided he remains there for the time it takes to prostrate oneself like a richly impure person who enters the temple. Halakha 20 The following rule, rules apply when one causes a Nazarite to so one, when one causes a Nazarite to contract ritual impurity. If the Nazarite acted intentionally, the Nazarite is liable for lashes and the person who caused him to contract impurity violates the prohibition against placing a stumbling block in front of the blind. If the Nazarite was not aware of the transgression and the person who caused him to, co to contract impurity acted intentionally, neither of them are liable for lashes. Why is the person who caused the Nazarite to contract impurity not liable for lashes? Since number 6-9 states, he defiles his Nazarite head. A person is only liable if he willfully causes his own self to incur impurity. Halakha 21 When a Nazarite who is in a state of ritual, of ritual purity makes himself ritually impure, he is also liable for lashes for the violation of the prohibition, Deuteronomy 23.22, do not delay in paying it. For he delayed the fulfilment of his Nazarite vow in purity and performed a deed. Similarly, if he took a Nazarite vow while in so while if he took a Nazarite vow while in a cemetery, he is also liable for lashes for the violation of the prohibition, do not delay in paying it. From this we learn that a Nazarite who made himself impure receives four sets of lashes. A. Because of the prohibition, he shall not become impure. B. Because of the prohibition, he shall not desecrate his word. C. Because of the prohibition, do not delay in paying it. And because of the prohibition, he shall not approach if he entered and incurred ritual impurity at the same time, as we explained.